Cincinnati and offer a little comment to the couple. Our next speaker, speaker number two, joined the club in July, just this year. His speech is called The Do's and Don'ts of a Successful Door-to-Door Book Salesman. When I asked him on his, about his comments on negotiation, he said, fast deals are bad deals. If someone's trying to hurry up the negotiation, then something is rotten in Denmark. You don't cut corners, do the deal the right way. And he says this comes from having negotiated software contracts for over 20 years. Please welcome Marty Mercer. Toastmasters and welcome guests. How many times has your perfectly normal day been ruined by that rap, rap, rap on the door and you look at the house and it's one of those pesky door-to-door -door The question is, how many of you have ever been on the outside trying to get in? How many of you have ever sold books or anything door-to-door? -door? A lot of you, very good. Well, I have sold books door-to-door. -door. Some after I graduated from college, Cumberland, Maryland. And tonight I want to talk about the three things to be successful in some of the bookstore deals. First thing they did was they sent us off to Nashville, Tennessee, Southwestern Company for a week of sales training. We had to memorize our demo script. We had to figure out the way to prospect and find the best neighborhoods with the best houses. We had to learn all the tips about minimizing our expenses to maximize our income. And we spent a week filling our head with positive motivation so that we could survive the rigors of people slamming the doors in our faces. Now I know you don't have time to go spend a week in sales school, and you certainly don't want to spend 12 weeks honing your skills to do that. So I'm going to share with you these three important tips. Tip number one, be brave. When you walk through those houses with the wild dogs chasing after you, the feral cats coming after you, you have no idea who's about to answer the door like the guy that answered the door with a beer foam mustache at 8.15 in the morning and invited me in to share one with him. Like the house where the woman opened the door in a see-through negligee. And she invited me in so that she could check out my inventory. <laughs> like the man who was working on his truck in his front yard and I walked up and I said, Sir, aren't you interested in getting a demo of these books and buying them? And he nodded his head and said, look in the front seat of that truck. I looked in there and there was a shock. Without even looking up from the carburetor, he said, son, if you don't want me to get interested in using that, I suggest you get on down. <laughs> so bravery is number one. Number two is follow your sales training exactly. They told us that the first few days of summer, we shouldn't carry any money in our pockets. We'd be more motivated to make that first sale. You'd be more motivated to get a cash deposit for my lunch breaks. So I did exactly what they told me to do. First morning out, it was cool up in Northern Maryland, so I found blue chips. I went out, I didn't have a car, what they called a walker. I went door to door, up one side of the street, down the other. Slam, slam, get out of here, get off my porch. That's all I heard. As the morning went by, the sun crept higher and higher, and I started getting hotter and hotter. And the sun started beating down, and sweat was pouring down my head. And back then, for all you youngsters, they didn't have water bottles. <laughs> so I had no water. I'd only eaten breakfast. As I started sweating more and more, I started going into my blue jeans, and I started getting stiff, and I was walking like a mummy from door to door. I knew I had to get in the house. I was about to go into a diabetic home. I thought I was seeing mirages in the distance. The last house I'd gone to said, Old Man Johnson lives next door, and he's raising his grandson. I guarded up all my energy, went up and knocked on that door, put on my best smile, and Mr. Johnson let me in. I got in, I demoed the books the way they told us to. Timmy was sitting right there. Mr. Johnson loved him, Timmy loved him. He signed the contract. Now comes the fun part. I said, Mr. Johnson, I need a cash deposit. His eyes got very big. He said, oh, I don't have any cash. So I did the only thing I could think of. I said, Timmy, you and I are going into your bedroom and we're rummaging through every drawer. We're going into the kitchen and we're rummaging through every drawer. And in 10 minutes of rummaging, I got $20 to count it as an official sale. I raced out the door to that little convenience store across the street. Let me tell you that Coke and that Snickers and those cheese puffs were the best lunch I've ever had. So stick to your sales training exactly. 
The third thing, don't rely on that smart aleck ad lib capability you might have. Went to a lady's house later in December, Mrs. Smith knocked on the door, got in, and started what was the perfect demo. They told us to sit on that book box of ours. I was sitting on it, the kids were right there on the floor, Mrs. Smith was on the couch, and I was doing the perfect demo. Everything I said, they were nodding, they were laughing, they were chuckling exactly the way they taught us in sales school. But it was going too good. I had this out-of-body experience of some foreboding bad thing about to happen. Mrs. Smith signed the contract, she wrote me the check, and then there's just one little thing, everything I thought was hunky door, and I said, Mrs. Smith, if I gave you five dollars, can I borrow your bathroom? It's exactly how they taught us how to save in sales school. I mean, I was going to give her money, I only wanted to borrow her bathroom, and then Mrs. Smith said something that I never expected. Mrs. Smith said something they didn't teach us at sales school. Mrs. Smith said, no. <laughs> I looked at her. I was expecting a yes, of course. I was about to head down the hall when she said, no. Well, first of all, well, maybe I should just say, Mrs. Smith, it's only number one. <laughs> <laughs> so then ad lib Marty showed up. Smart alecky Marty showed up. Too cute Marty showed up. And I said, well, that's OK, Mrs. Smith. I'll just go outside and borrow one of your trees. <laughs> Thinking, of course, that she would see the error in her judgment. She would agree to let me use the bathroom. And all would be forgiven. She jumps up from the kitchen table and starts screaming and shouting at me, why you? Give me that check back. She rips up the contract. If you don't give me my money back, I'm calling the police. I don't want to call the cops. I need my wallet. I want the check. Look at it. What do you do? She rips it up. Yeah, that kind of smart element. So there you have it. Be brave, even in the face of beer foam mustaches, see-through negligees, and shotguns. Stick to your sales training, even in a diabetic coma. Number three, don't let that smart alecky guy show up. Even if you're jumping up and down, you gotta go to the bathroom. Oh yeah, and one other thing. I walked out of Mrs. Smith's house, knocked on the next door, got inside, closed the deal, got a signed contract, and I went to the bathroom for free. <laughs> 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 <laughs>